We are here at Warskwal Bergflam. That means the mountain flame. For those of you at home who did not know like me until five minutes ago, and we've got our first learner question for the day here, coming from... Gerard Lewe from Warskwal Bergflam, now spread I'm in grade 12. Oh, you're in grade 12. How old are you? Uh, I'm 17, turning 18 in September. Yes. You should go. Uh, yeah, you should apply to Springboks, man. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about uh, Nelspreet? Uh, what is your. Uh, Ginsteling ding van Nelspreet. Ginsteling ding van Nelspreet. Die weer. The weather. Ah. It's, it's hot, but not as hot as Limpopo, eh? What is your learner question for today? How do I determine the used and produced values during a KC calculation? Very simple. How do I, well, not, not really simple. How do I determine the used and produced values during a KC calculation over to you in the studio? Well, thank you very much for that question. Let's just quickly repeat it for our viewers at home. He asked us, how do I determine the used and produced values during a KC calculation? Now, our KC value in this case stands for our equilibrium constant. And you'll note that it's a capital letter K with a small subscript C at the bottom. Later on, when we do assets and bases, you'll see we're going to get to KW, which stands for ionization constant, as well as KA and KB. But now we're looking at the equilibrium constant. And as we said, that's our KC. Now, our KC, seeing that we're going to take a look at our calculations, will need the following things into take or rather to be taken into consideration in order to be calculating it. Now you might not completely understand it the first time around so I'm going to briefly go through them and then we'll apply to an example so that you understand it a bit better. So the first thing that we're going to need to take a look at is if there is no amount of products specified at the start of a reaction we're going to need to be taking the values of as zero. Now obviously that's a bit common sense. If we start a reaction, we're going to pour in a lot of what we call reactants, that is our starting material. But there's no products that's formed yet. So therefore that means that product value is actually zero. So unless they do state a value, which might happen, but in most cases they don't, which means then it must be a zero value for you. The next thing that you need to take a look at is finding a used and produced value from this. Now you'll notice that I'm using both the used and the produced words. Now used specifically means that my reactants during this reaction will get used up but my products will be produced so our reactants will get subtracted from and our products will get added to now once we have this one used and produced value we'll need to go and find the remaining used and produced values from it so it's almost like it's a key and that key will then unlock the remaining used and produced doors for you now there's a specific way in which you need to go about calculating these used and produced values we're going to be using the mole ratio which is basically that value right on the front of your balanced equation what we'll do with that mole ratio we'll divide by what we have and we'll multiply by what we're going to now, as i said if you don't completely understand it now don't worry when we do an example a bit later on uh, hopefully you're going to get the hang of it good from there onwards we're going to be calculating the substance that will be left at equilibrium and from there onwards once we find the moles at equilibrium we'll be calculating the concentration using our formula of concentration is equal to moles divided by volume now something that you have learned in grade 11 though is this volume that we're talking about must be in a specific unit because concentration is mole per cubic decimeters our volume must be measured as well in cubic decimeters so one way in which they try to catch you out is they give you cubic centimeters and then they ask you actually to go and do the whole calculation hoping that you would remember that it should be converted that cubic centimeters thing to cubic decimeters so let's take a look in this case if I've got cubic centimeters in order to convert it to cubic decimeters I'll need to be dividing with a thousand now in very odd occasions they might give you cubic meters if you need to convert that to cubic decimeters you'll be multiplying though with a thousand but as I said in most cases they give you cubic centimeters and that one you need to convert to cubic decimeters now let's go and take a look at that example which I've promised first off it says over here we're going to have five moles of nitrogen gas and five moles of hydrogen gas that will be injected into 500 cubic centimeters sealed empty container equilibrium will be reached at 400 degrees Celsius and upon analysis of this equilibrium mixture now the amount of ammonia is 1.2 moles 
further on, they give you this equation, which must be balanced. If not, it's very good for you to go and check it. And then we need to go and calculate the value of the equilibrium constant, which is your Kc, at 400 degrees Celsius. Now, in order for us to go and do this calculation, our Kc value makes use of concentration values. But in this case, we've been giving you mole values. So you basically need to go and convert the mole values to concentration values at the end. But there's a whole lot of information that you're going to need to take into consideration. And for that, you're going to need to go and draw a table. Now, it's not a must that you need to draw the table, but it makes it a whole lot more easier for yourself. Unfortunately, you will need to memorize the specific headings of the table columns. So let's take a look at our table. In my case, because I've got nitrogen and hydrogen that will form ammonia, I'll be writing down my reaction and I'll place each one of them in a column of their own. Now, these specific headings on the side, as I said, you're going to need to memorize. You're going to have initial first, then the used and produced, then the equilibrium, and then finally, you'll notice square brackets with equilibrium. Now, whenever we talk about square brackets, it is an abbreviation for us for concentration. And you'll see later on when we do the KC expression in the last part of our lesson, we are also going to be using these square brackets a lot. So it's just making it a little bit easier for us. So whenever you see square brackets, it's just an abbreviation for concentration. So do make sure that you don't use your nice rounded brackets. It must be the square ones. Okay. Now, because we are talking about here your reactants, we said that your reactants will get used up. So we're going to subtract values here. On the other hand, the products, which is always found after the arrow, they will get added to. So we start off with some initial values. We will subtract, subtract the value, sorry, for our reactants, and we will be left at equilibrium with a specific value then. And the same here for my products, I will now be get added values to my product to find a final equilibrium value. So all of these three ones here at the top will be making use of mole values. But just the last one, we will go and calculate the concentration of. Okay, so let's just quickly go on back to our example to see what of these specific information we're going to need to be placing back into our table. So remember our table, or rather our question first off said that we started with five moles of nitrogen as well as five moles of hydrogen. And note though that they didn't say anything about the product in the beginning. The only place that they did mention the product was though at equilibrium that there was in this case 1.2 moles of ammonia left. So we're going to place in, in the nitrogen's case, five mole, for hydrogen as well, five mole, because they didn't mention that there was any product in the beginning, we'll be using zero over there. And they did tell us at equilibrium, a mole value though, of the ammonia was 1.2 moles. So now that I have this information, I need to go and take a look at my table and see with which one of this nitrogen, hydrogen or ammonia I can go and calculate the used and produced value for. Because the moment that I'm able to find that, that's then the key which will unlock the remaining doors. So it's quite easy to see if I take a look at my table. I started here with nothing for my ammonia and I suddenly ended up with 1.2. That means 1.2 moles of ammonia was produced. And as I said, this is going to be my key. In order for me to go and unlock the remaining drawers, which means my hydrogen and eventually my nitrogen, I will divide by what I have. Now, when we talk about have, we talk about the mole ratios. I've got ammonia moles, so that means I'm using this mole ratio. I divide by two and I'm going to multiply by what I'm going to, which is the hydrogen. That's the one I want. That means in my case five. So we take, divide by two, multiply by three. So now we take the 1,2, we divide it by 2, we'll multiply it by 3, and then you'll see we're going to end up then having 1.8 as my value. So this is how we're going to unlock the doors. We're also going to go now from ammonia to my nitrogen. So let's quickly take a look at that. Going from my ammonia to my nitrogen, we will now be using once again the 2, because that is what I have, but I'll be multiplying by my 1 in the front here for my nitrogen. So once again, divide by 2, multiply by 1, so I take the 0, 1,2, divide by 2 gives me 0, 0,6, multiply by 1 gives me 0, 0,6 in this case, and then we end up having 5 minus 0, 0,6 to go and find my final equilibrium values. Okay, so now that I've got my used and produced values, this is just the most difficult part of the whole thing, because from here onwards, it's a straightforward calculation. So let's go and calculate the last part of my equilibrium mole values and then determine the concentration. So we'll notice now, in order for me to go and find my equilibrium values, I'll take 5 minus 0, 0,6 
and that will give me 4,4. For my hydrogen, it's 5 minus 1,8 to give me 3,2. And for my ammonia, it's in this case started with 0, we formed in this case 1.2, and we ended up with 1,2. Okay, so to go and determine my concentration values, we'll just remember first convert the cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters, and then we will be dividing each one of them to go and find my final value. So for nitrogen, it was 4.4 divided by the 0, 0,5 to give us 8,8. .8. And if I take a look at all of my hydrogen, as well as the nitrogen, we get 6,4 and 2,4. We're still here at War School Bergflam, uh, Bergflam High School, if I was to translate it to English. And uh, we are here with our second learner question coming from Bianca. Bianca, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? I'm very well. What's your surname? Where are you from? How old are you? Favorite thing? Okay, my surname is from Barkham, and I'm from Nalspreit, and I. How many years? Uh, how old are you? How many years have you been on Earth? 18 years. That's a very long time on this rock, eh? Oh. <laughs> All right, so what is your learner question for our teacher today? Okay, um, how do you calculate the value of Kc after finding the mole values at equilibrium? How do you calculate the value of Kc after finding the mole value at equilibrium? Over to you in the studio. Well, thank you for that question, Bianca. Let's just quickly repeat it for our viewers at home. She asks us, how do I calculate the value for Kc after finding the mole values at equilibrium? So what we've basically done in our previous part of the lesson is we went and found those mole values at equilibrium. But now we need to still find the Kc value. And for that, we're going to need to take a look at what we call a Kc expression. So it's basically a formula. But this formula will change depending every time on what the reaction is. Okay, so now let's just first start off with the main part of the expression that you would need to memorize off by heart and that is where we'll take a look at Kc is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So do take note though when I write it down that I'm going to use using square brackets because square means for us concentration so it's always the products divided by in this case the concentration of the reactants. Now a few things are allowed and are not allowed in the Kc expression. If you take a look at the phases of the substances that means your reactants and products given in your equation you will only be putting into the Kc expression things that was in the gas phase and things that was in an aqueous phase. Anything else that was, for example, either in the solid or the pure liquid phase, we're going to be excluding. So you can be using a value of 1 for it, or you can just leave it out, seeing that if you multiply by 1, it's not going to make any difference. So just make sure that anything that's gases and aqueous solutions, they are solu in this case included, but our solids and liquids, they will not be included into our Kc expression. Now also you would have noticed, specifically if you watched our game, how KC do not have any units. So although we talk about the concentration at the top and the concentration at the bottom, those two concentrations just cancel each other out. And we are left with basically just a value that will indicate for us whether the forward or the reverse reaction would have been favoured. Now before we get to that part, let's just maybe go quickly go over as to what does the KC bigger than, equal to or less than one then actually mean for us. If I end up with a KC value that's equal to one, then obviously that means I've got the same amount of products and reactants so that they end up cancelling each other out. But now we get to a point where Casey could be greater than or less than one. So let's take a look at it. if Casey is then greater than one, what does that mean for us? Casey greater than one means that we have actually produced more products and because we're going to have reactants going to products, note that this is a reversible reaction. If we end up with more products, the forward reaction would have been favored. So that means Casey greater than one means more products and the forward reaction was favored. As I said, if Casey is equal to one, same amount of products and reactants would have been favored in this case. And then, if we end up with Kc less than 1, then it means more reactants. Remember though, we still have our equilibrium, reactants going to products. If I end up with more reactants, then it means the reverse reaction in this situation then was favoured. Okay, so let's go and quickly go and punch back our values into this Kc expression. So remember back again, this was my formula or my balanced equation that was given to me. What we would need to do though is when we put in these into the concentration, which is the square brackets, the mole ratios will become to the power of. So if I have a mole ratio of 2, it becomes to the power of 2. If it has 3, to the power of 3. And this is obviously 1, which basically means to the power of 1. Good. There was our values. We only used the last part of our column. Punching in our values, you'll notice then we're going to end up finding in this case 2,5 times in the above negative 3. That means 0, 0,0025 as our value and that means case is less than 1. We have more reactants and therefore the reverse reaction was favoured.